Hello, Kelly. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. It's good to talk to you again. So, you too, sir. It's uh, for our members who are watching this t today. Then um, let's introduce you. you Let's introduce you and your company. Maybe you can just tell us a little bit about who you are and what Masters Master of Code actually does. Sure. So I'm Kelly Cassidy. I am the Director of Technology North America at Master of Code Global. Uh, we have four offices worldwide, uh, two in Ukraine, one in Cherkasy, one in Kiev. Uh, we have uh, central office here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada for our North American technical operations, which is where I work out of. Uh, and we have uh, some sales offices located in the United States, one in Seattle and one in Colorado. Master of Code is an organization that has been around for since 2004. Uh, started off as an organization that did bespoke software development for companies uh, across a number of fronts, uh, desktop, web, mobile, what have you. And over time, the organization has evolved uh, to focus not exclusively, but have a specialization in the conversational AI space. So we work a lot with various chatbot, chatbot platforms, uh, voice bot activities. Um, since 2016, we've been heavily involved in those activities, working with a number of uh, platforms, number of vendors, and yeah, and we continue to grow our conversational space, including growing uh, a discipline in the organization focused just on conversational design. Excellent. Well, that's, that's a really good, um, good introduction to what you guys do. Thank you for that. So tell me a little bit more about, you know, the the, the tools that you have for contact centers, because yeah, on your website you have a, a range of different solutions. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit more about, say, contact centers who are dealing with high volume traffic. Maybe they're looking at chatbots, maybe they're using, um, you know, voice analytics, etc. What? T tell us a little bit more about, you know, some of the things that you guys are doing then with, with our industry. So what we tend to do is create conversational solutions uh, that assist customers, including contact centers, with optimizing their call center or their office efficiencies. Uh, we will work with customers to identify use cases, some of the more, say, the 80% type of questions that could be fairly quickly answered for, uh, for agents that sometimes just take up a lot of time. Um, no one wants to get a take a call center question that's just what are your hours of operation though that could be handled by a bot as an example allowing human agents to be available for the more complex the more advanced questions so we'll work with customers over different platforms to provide solutions that can assist them in efficiency and focusing on the big picture items the ones that require human touch that require a little more uh, digging research interaction in order to facilitate getting the answers to your customers. Additionally, we also work with uh, creating solutions that can help with building out um, more assistance for call center folks. So if you're working in a call center and you need assistance uh, or you want kind of an assistant to kind of help guide you with where you can find information, uh, we have solutions that can tie into the incoming request over chat and can uh, provide information to the to the agent uh, with a high level of confidence as to the customer may be asking about this here's some information you can share with them here's a here's a snippet of information you can speak to uh, here's a link you can send them here's an asset you can send them just to optimize their experience as to be as efficient as possible from from both the customer side as well as the agent side so, so that's really helping those organizations who are looking for a self-service solution to to, to try and filter off some of those, um, you know, standard type calls, like you said, hours of operation, things like that. And then also help the agents as well when they're looking for information to, 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 to make them like super agents, basically. So they have all the information at their fingertips and the systems are, are supporting them. Exactly. And I think some of those cases, especially the self-serve component, is quite valuable when you hit uh, uh, staffing issues or you suddenly see a spike in growth of the opportunity of the business. It allows you to still continue to serve uh, your customers with a high level of quality uh, as you work through ramping up your team to be able to hand, handle what is hopefully a longer term influx of requests. 
So, so I guess with um, you know the pandemic and that, I guess some of your solutions must have been very, very useful for contact centers who are already using them or looking to to deploy self-service solutions very quickly. Where we had uh, the pandemic uh, did not slow us down. Let's put it that way. Right. There was still a lot of opportunities for us. We kept we kept going strong. Uh, some of our clients pivoted with some of the use cases they wanted the bots to handle and where the automations could assist. But for the most part, we kept uh, delivering the solutions that they were asking for. Uh, we did see a large uptake, especially as you see call centers needing to answer questions or alternatively from a cost savings perspective where uh, smaller businesses needed to adjust expectations and so a bot could handle some of the more mainstream questions, allowing them to repurpose existing staff for other purposes in their organization too. So this way they could still keep a customer service flow solid, they could keep the operations growing strong, but then individuals could still pivot and uh, retain, uh, basically not have to sacrifice any of their workforce where it was possible. Now I, I got a question for you because you, you, you know, you talk about chatbots, you talk about voice as well. Which is the more challenging from a technology perspective to handle? Is it is it the chats because the way people write stuff and they might make spelling mistakes or is it the voice or are they both equal, equally as challenging? Uh, I think that depends on who you ask from a technology perspective. I personally think the voice bots are a little more challenging, but that challenge is also part of the fun uh, because you do get multiple different ways in which you can interact. So with the chatbot, you do have an omni-channel experience. Uh, you could do it on a website, you could do it via Facebook Messenger, via WhatsApp, uh, via SMS, via any number of conversational channel. Uh, and you can take in that text. At the end of the day, it's still text that has a natural language parsing to it that then interprets the intent and then returns some of the information to the end user. With voice, you actually have more of a challenge partly due to accents, partly due to regionalization, uh, partly due to some people's just uh, the cues that they give when they speak. Uh, so voice becomes a much more challenging and to me much more fun uh, area to explore into. And you also have your, your, your two methodologies of how you would integrate voice, primar primarily two methodologies. So one is your assistants like Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and your other could be over an IVR system as well, where you're taking in information, where you have to deal with uh, scenarios of accent, or in some cases, a multilingual individual who sometimes says part of the sentence in one language, part of the sentence in the other, and the system needs to be able to still handle that type of a scenario. And we've done solutions along those lines. Yeah, it gets very interesting when you're dealing with languages where there are some some, some language or you know some countries they actually do speak two languages in their conversation. Mm -hmm. Like um, if you go to places like India, they'll use English words as well as Indian words in a conversation. So, uh, and here in Canada, I've done the English and the French. Sometimes <laughs> just get mixed up in the same sentence. I, I'm sure you have, my friend. Um, talking a little bit about you know technology and AI in general terms. I mean, you meet people all the time. You come across um, people who are saying, "Hey, you into AI? What what are the common misconceptions that you hear generally about artificial intelligence these days when it applies to customer service, contact centers?" A lot of the main concern is over privacy information. Um, you have customers who are very, very cautious of any information of their personal PII information getting into an automated system because of just fear it can be stolen. You've got uh, uh, identity theft activities. To be fair, that is a concern to have. However, it's a concern to have even without AI in the mix. It's good. It, it could potentially happen. It is something we just all need to be cautious and aware of. AI doesn't introduce any additional risk. However, uh, the perception that it does exists. So that is something to consider there. Um, most of the time, that is what I hear of the main concerns. But with AI, you do, the privacy piece needs to be considered from an implementation side in terms of where you house that data, where you host that data, how it gets uh, stored and delivered to uh, to the systems. Um, because of uh, GDPR in Europe, as an example, you need to ensure that the data resides within Europe and with other areas as well, there has to be a limitation on the export of that information. Because there is a parsing of that data somewhere uh, in an NLU, uh, that information could 
get transferred elsewhere, but solutions can also uh, anonymize the PII data before sending to those external solutions so that there is no traceability available uh, when it does get sent out. So, so by, by um, you know, based on what you just, just said, does that mean that an organization who's trying to deploy their, you know, say a solution like yours globally in different countries of the world, um, they have to look at things differently in the way they're using their data. So in Europe, they might have all the data residing on a European server in the States somewhere else, and they have to kind of duplicate things and, and manage it individually, or is, you know, is that one of the challenges that global companies would have these days? It is a challenge. It is something you need to be aware of because of the regulatory laws in the region that you are in. Um, in Europe, with GDPR, the data cannot leave the EU or should not leave the EU. There are exceptions to that from a review and an operational standpoint, but they're very limited in scope. So to keep uh, an operation running in the EU, you might want to have multiple centers uh, that have redundancy so the system can remain operational even during updates, even during uh, high peak volumes of calls so that the bots and the artificial intelligence solutions can still resu return results to your customers. Um, when you hit other areas such as the United States and Canada, there's different regulations, some of which there's a fair amount of overlap, which is fantastic, which eases the development burden of those bots, uh, some of the storage regulatory requirements, but there's still limitations. And so you need to understand where your users reside and abide by the laws and regulatory requirements for those areas. So, so if, a com if, if, a, if an organization contacted you guys today and said, hey, look, you know, we'd love to look at chatbots, love to look at, you know, other artificial intelligence based tools to, to deploy, where would you, how would you start the conversation with them? What, what would you do first? So our first bit is obviously, what are, the, what are the problems you're trying to solve? Why do you need an automated solution? We have an exercise we go through with our customers to identify uh, their actual use cases. We do discovery sessions with them. Uh, what we have found is that sometimes the initial impression of what they're looking for mm -hmm. doesn't actually match their need. So it's a simple kind of a business analysis process. We need to find out what they actually need. They may perceive they need X, but really they need Y. So we'll work through that with them uh, to find the best optimization of the automation that they could utilize and where AI and other technologies can come into a system. That discovery, depending on the size of the organization, can take a bit. Um, it all depends on the needs and as well as how fast they want to get, uh, they want to get the solution in play for internal testing. Everything's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but there are optimizations and there are phased approaches you can take in order to deliver the most efficient solution to your customers as you can. Okay, interesting. And, you know, as a, as a director of technology, you obviously are very much aware about all the trends, what's happening in the industry. That's part of your job is to look at what's going on in the industry and, you know, also look at technology innovation. What do you personally see as the most exciting evolution or, or the, the next best thing coming along in AI um, in general terms and then maybe also specifically to customer service? In general terms, I think the next biggest component is actually voice technology. I think we're going to see a huge jump in that over the next the next six months to a year. And I think that is explicitly as a result of COVID. A lot of individuals, they don't want to touch shared touch screens anymore. You look at health professionals, they're going to have tablets to do their work, but they're not going to want to touch the screen when they hand it off to the next individual. Voice is going to be a huge benefit to them in order to maintain uh, just a safety protocol, especially if they're wearing a lot of personal protective equipment um, and they may have the gloves on and then the tactic touch on the tablet screens may not actually be, even be operational. So voice is definitely going to be a huge impact there. Um, from a contact center, I do think seeing some more advanced activities in a bot environment is starting to grow. In fact, that is what we're seeing. A lot more integrations to underlying systems to either supply information directly to customers or to provide additional information to agents in an assistant fashion so that they can be as efficient as possible. 
Customers want information as soon as possible. They don't want to sit waiting 10 minutes while something is look, being looked up in a system. So the more integrations that are available, the more conversations that the agents can have, uh, I think the more pleased a customer is going to be at the end of the day uh, to deliver the request that they've uh, called in and asked for. And, and as a global organization and 15, 16 years in, in, in business, where do you see the biggest Adapt, uh, adaptation of te this technology. You know, who's, who are the guys or who are the, the countries in the world where they're really ad um, adopting this technology early on and utilizing it to its fullest extent? Honestly, we've had, we have clients from all over. Um, we do see a lot more activity in the North American markets recently than we have in other markets. Part of that may be due to our presence in North America mm -hmm. and uh, our ability from uh, from a support standpoint, but we have had conversations with European countries. Uh, we have had conversations with African countries. There's a lot of opportunity around the world. I honestly don't think there's one geo that is very specifically focused. I think there is a lot coming out of the North American space, but part of that as well from a voice perspective is due to that is where Amazon and Google are both centralized. So when you look at the two digital assistants, there's a lot of activity coming from those headquarters. Interesting. Certainly, certainly a lot of a lot of activity around the world with chatbots and more mm -hmm. uh, voice-based systems that we're we're spotting these days, which is really good. Um, we always get asked a question, and I'm sure you get asked it a million times as well, Kelly. But do you think? that AI one day will be so sophisticated that we will not need contact center agents? Could it get there? Probably. Should it? I would argue no. I, I think there's still that feeling of the human touch that you're talking to a real person or you have that ability to have a real person available to you to assist where needed. Whenever we build uh, chatbot solutions for our customers, we really emphasize the ability to do a handoff to a human agent. And we try to make that experience as smooth as possible for the end user so that they can experience that uh, with as minimal impact. We want it to be a smooth transition. The customer knows that they're talking to a bot, then they're talking to a real person to address some of the bigger issues. Uh, and then they could get handed back to the bot to continue the experience and the conversation. But their more advanced items are being handled by a person. And a lot of times that provides a lot of comfort from the experiential uh, area. So, so if a company came to you and said, look, we, we want to close down our contact centers. We just want to put everything through a self-service chatbot type of uh, approach. What would your reaction to that be? I would want to understand the use cases uh, that is driving that. I'd want to take a look and make sure that they are activities that make sense from a bot perspective, that it is A, feasible, uh, B, and B, makes sense to an end user who will be engaging with the bot, mm -hmm. that there aren't any expectations uh, that they could still get to someone as a real agent. Now, would, there would still need to hopefully be a, a live agent handoff in a certain sense, even if it's just a leave a message and an agent calls them back via another channel or via or contacts them via another medium, even email. Um, there are certain things where the technology might be ready, but I don't think the people will be ready right. to adopt that, that approach just yet. So the two mindsets, I think technology could get there much faster then I think society is going to be willing to accept a full go 100% whole hog into an AI mindset. Interesting. That's, that's, that's very interesting um, stuff here, here, Kelly. Very interesting talking to you today about some of the things that you guys are doing as well. And, um, you know, I want to thank you for, for joining us. It's been great talking to somebody who's literally just down the road from us in, in, in Winnipeg. So um, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And we will hope to see you again soon on some of our other uh, online events. So thank you, my friend, for your Sound. time. Stay safe and take Sounds care. Sounds great. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot. Take Appreciate care. It. Bye.